All right, students, let's talk about redox reactions. Get out your science notebook. Let's get started. Here's the essential question. How do we recognize redox reactions based on oxidized and reduced elements? Some of you might be confused at the moment. Hey, we didn't learn about redox being a type of main reactions, and it's not. Redox isn't a main type of the five reactions we learned about. Redox is a subset of many types of chemical reactions. Synthesis, decomposition, single replacement, and combustion are all redox reactions as well. But what is a redox reaction? If you take a look at this bolt here, you might realize that it's rusting, and some of you even call out and say, hey, it's being oxidized, and that's true. This bolt on the, is also being reduced. Now, what is redox? Redox is short for reduction and oxidation, two processes that go together. Any chemical process driven by the transfer of electrons is a redox reaction. Now, what are each of those things, oxidation and reduction? Well, here's something I want you to remember. Leo the lion says, grr. Now, that might seem a little bit weird, but bear with me. Leo stands for losing electrons is oxidation. And GER stands for gaining electrons is reduction. This is just a way to remember which one is which. Oxidation, losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. Leo the lion says GER. Well, let's see this in action. Here is magnesium and two fluorine elements. And they're going to go through a reaction. And we're going to show that they obey oxidation and reduction and transfer their electrons. You might recall that we learned about this in Chem 1 a long time ago, where we talked about how atoms want to either gain or lose valence electrons, those outer shell electrons, in order to react and in order to become stable. Now, one thing we need to remember that's very important is that electrons are negatively charged. That's going to play a, an important part later. But the other really important thing we need to recognize is that elements by themselves do not have a charge until they bond. And that's going to be a little confusing because sometimes I say, hey, what's magnesium's charge? And a lot of you look on the periodic table and we wrote or it is written that magnesium has a charge of positive two. But remember, Magnesium does not have a charge until it bonds. An elemental magnesium with all its valence electrons, like this one right here, does not have a charge. And so we'll continue to see that as we go through. Similarly, these fluorines, these are fluorines that have not gone through a reaction. They're just elemental fluorines. They have seven valence electrons each and all the other electrons in their innermost shells. They each also do not have a charge. Now they will. They're going to go through a chemical reaction. We know that magnesium will lose its electrons to fluorine, and the fluorines will each gain electrons in order to fulfill or order to fill their outer shell. We typically call that the octet rule. So what happens when that happens? Well, when magnesium loses its two electrons, remember electrons are negatively charged, magnesium becomes positive, specifically positive two charge. Fluorine, on the other hand, each of these fluorines are gaining electrons. Remember, electrons are negative charge. So each of these fluorines are becoming more negative, negative one each, because each of them gain an electron each. We could write this as a chemical reaction equation. This is that chemical reaction equation. And sometimes we can even write charges in there. For example, magnesium and fluorine, again, these elements do not have a charge. But when they bond over here and make magnesium fluoride, they become charged because they're transferring electrons. Magnesium becomes positive two, and each of the fluorines become negative one. This is oxidation reduction. This is also a single replacement reaction. That's the main, I'm sorry, this is a synthesis reaction. I apologize. This is a synthesis or a composition reaction, which is the main type of reaction. But it is redox because magnesium is being oxidized. Remember Leo? It's losing electrons. Fluorine, on the other hand, is being reduced. Leo says grr. Gaining, re gaining electrons is reduction, which is what fluorine is doing. All right, let me give you another example of this. Here we have a single replacement reaction. We have gold sulfate and copper. This is going to go through a reaction. Copper and gold are going to switch places. Copper is going to replace gold in this single replacement reaction. That's because it's higher on the activity series. It's a little bit more reactive, and it's able to do that. But we need to figure out 
that this is a this is a redox reaction as well. Let's kind of prove it here. Well, we could do that just by looking at the charges of the elements when they start out. In this case, gold and sulfate are a positive two and a negative two charge. That's how they combine together. Copper, being in its elemental form, does not have a charge. It's just a zero charge. Yes, we do know that copper will eventually be positive charge, which lets us also know that it's going to replace gold. But right now, it doesn't have a charge. So we go ahead and cause these two things to react. Copper will replace the gold and become copper 2 sulfate. That 2 is a positive 2 copper, and sulfate stays negative 2. Gold, on the other hand, goes off on its own. It becomes its elemental form. It's not attached to anything, so it doesn't have a charge anymore. It's not, it's not the way it used to be. So we can take a look at how these elements are changing from one end to another. Notice that there is a change or a transfer of charge. This is definitely a redox reaction. Now, typically, we write to write, like to write these things called half reactions. Let's go ahead and do that right now, explaining what's going on. So gold starts off with a positive two charge. That's this gold shown right here. And gold becomes a zero charge. That's over here. That's after the product. Now, why does that happen? Gold is gaining two electrons. And we're showing that right here with this half reaction. We know it's gaining two electrons because it starts off with positive two. Electrons are negatively charged. When that gold gains two negative charges, the positive two cancels out and neutralizes to zero. Now, what about copper? Let's show copper's half reaction. Copper starts off with no charge. It's an elemental form. And copper becomes positive two. So that's being shown right here. Why does it do that? Well, if you look right here, part of our half reaction shows what's happening with those electrons. Copper is losing two electrons becoming less negative, it's becoming more positive, so it's becoming positive too. Now, one thing that's a little bit hard to see here, but you can kind of see right here, these are the electrons that are being transferred between the two. When gold gains those electrons, it's gaining them because copper lost the electrons. That's how gold becomes neutral and copper becomes positive too. All right, here is a student practice problem. I suggest you pause the video right now and see if you can solve this all on your own and apply those concepts you just learned. What is being oxidized and what is being reduced in this reaction? Show the half reactions. Show what's happening to each individual element. Did you pause the video? I hope so. Let me go ahead and show you how this works and we can do it together if needed. So let's take a look at the starting reactants and their charges. So we're going to make a little side note. Potassium, being an element, starts off with zero charge. Oxygen, also being an element, starts off with zero charge. Now they're going to go through a reaction, and you can see that they are combining together. This is another composition or synthesis reaction. When they combine together, or the reason they can combine together, is because they're transferring electrons. This is definitely a redox reaction. Potassium typically likes to be positive one and oxygen typically likes to be negative two when that happens. And so you can see here that we have K2O in order for them to neutralize each other. But more importantly, with this redox reaction, we see how the charges are changing between each of the elements. So let's write some half reactions. Here's potassium. Potassium, starting with zero, will lose one electron that's negatively charged and become more positive, specifically positive one. Oxygen, on the other hand, starting with zero charge, will gain two electrons and it will become negative two charge. This is a redox reaction. Potassium is being oxidized here and oxygen is being reduced. Oxidation is losing electrons. Reduction is gaining electrons. Leo the lion says, Ger. All right, I got one more example for you. Here is an example of another type of reaction, and let's test to see if it's a redox reaction. Again, the simple way to do that is just to show charges and if they're changing from one end to the other. Let's start with iron 2 sulfide. Well, iron 2 sulfide is a plus 2 iron and a negative 2 sulfur. Hydrochloric acid, hydrogen is a plus 1 and chlorine is a minus 1. Now, these are going to go and rearrange each other to form these products over here. By the way, if you haven't figured this out yet, this is a double replacement reaction. When they replace each other, 
their charges are still there. They haven't changed. They're just changed the partners they're with. So here that iron will be still be plus two and chlorine will be minus one. Hydrogen will be plus one and sulfur will be minus two. Is this a redox reaction? Well, if you take a look from start to end, each of these elements, none of them are changing their charge. They might be changing their partner, but their charges are staying the same. There's no transfer of electrons going here. So this is not a redox reaction. See, double replacement reactions typically are not redox reactions because they follow this typical trend. All right, that leads us to the end of the notes. Take a moment to review and highlight key terms. It's good to ponder and ask questions and seek answers to those questions. Finally, summarize and answer that essential question. Good luck.